One of the biggest arguments among historians in U.S. history relates to the impact of the American Revolution. Over the years, a significant amount of time and energy has been dedicated to whether or not the American Revolution was indeed revolutionary. In other words, was the American Revolution a radical shift from the past, or was it simply a war for independence in which many things remained unchanged? So today I'm going to walk you through the effects of the American Revolution and let you decide that for yourself. So any discussion of the effects of the American Revolution should begin with politics, since some of the most obvious changes to the colonies were political. First, the American Revolution legally created the United States as we know it. The Treaty of Paris, which was signed in 1783, established a new sovereign state, the United States of America, which stretched from the Atlantic coast to the Mississippi River. This was a significant change in the lives of the former colonists, who were now free to establish their own form of government. In 1776, the Continental Congress called on the states to create their own constitutions. Now, traditionally, constitutions had not been a written document like we think of them today, but rather a collection of laws, customs, or precedents that guided the government uh, in, in the ways in which they behaved. The American colonists produced something new something that would shape all of U.S. politics going forward. States began to produce written constitutions that defined the powers of the government and actually placed limitations on what the government could and could not do. Many of these written state constitutions also included a Bill of Rights, the election of legis legislators, uh, limitations on the powers of the executive branch, and so on. These state constitutions would become very influential in the creation of a national government by establishing the principle of republicanism within the emerging United States, as well as the importance of having a set of written rules on which all government would be based. The first national government created in the United States was under the Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation were adopted by the Second Continental Congress in 1777 and established a confederation of the states, which is a loose friendship between the states where very little power was granted to the central government. The government under the Articles of Confederation was kept intentionally weak in order to prevent the new central government from becoming tyrannical, like the British government that had come before it. As a result, the government under the Articles of Confederation had no executive branch, no federal judiciary, no standing army, no navy, no power to tax, no power to regulate commerce, and even no ability to end conflicts among states. Eventually, these weaknesses in the Articles of Confederation would necessitate the creation of the U.S. Constitution in 1787, which we will talk about in a later video. Now, both of these governments were democratic governments with elected officials making the United States the first enduring Republican government for a large nation ever created. This in itself is significant, but we have to note that there were restrictions on the form of democracy being created by our founding fathers. First of all, only white men of property or who owned property were allowed to vote. Women and African Americans were barred from participating in the new system, and Native Americans were left out of the new nation entirely. In fact, Native American tribes were viewed by the new United States government as foreign entities that existed on American soil. And the new government would spend the years following the American Revolution fighting a series of wars for control of Western lands from Native American tribes. The last political change that I want to discuss that came out of the American Revolution is the idea of separation of church and state. The Anglican Church, because of its association with Great Britain, was almost completely eliminated by the American Revolution. And over time, the states ended the practice of established churches supported by tax dollars. Thomas Jefferson helped create the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which passed in 1786 and prohibited state support for religious institutions while also recognizing the people's right to worship freely. The Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom would become a model for the religious freedom professed later in the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. So those are some of the political effects of the American Revolution. There were social changes brought about by the American Revolution as well. Not all Americans consider themselves to be patriots, and following the signing of the Declaration of Independence, loyalists within the colonies began to face increased persecution. Viewed as traitors by American patriots, those who remained loyal to King George III suddenly found themselves being harassed or threatened with violence or imprisonment. As a result, between 60 and 80,000 loyalists fled the colonies for British-controlled Canada. 
The estates of these loyalists were often confiscated and sold to revolutionaries. This process did not produce major so social upheaval, though, because the patriots who bought the loyalist estates were often wealthy themselves. And so in essence, the old British elite were simply replaced with the new wealthy American elite. However, the removal of these loyalists did have two major effects on American society moving forward. First of all, an aristocracy never truly took hold in the United States. In other words, there were no Americans of nobility or title, no, no dukes, no lords, etc. in the United States after the American Revolution. Secondly, um, though there was not widespread property redistribution, small farmers and entrepreneurs felt that the new government was more likely to look out for their interests. And the newly acquired lands that were out west from the Treaty of uh, Paris promised greater chances for social mobility in the future. As a result, small farmers and people of the middling classes became more involved in politics. Before the Revolutionary, uh, Revolutionary War, wealthy men dominated colonial assemblies. Afterwards, the proportion of yeoman farmers and small entrepreneurs dramatically increased, especially in northern states. So the ideals of the American Revolution also greatly affected the lives of women. Traditionally, men had controlled all public institutions, and under British common law, women could not own property, enter into contracts, or initiate lawsuits. Women had played an important role in the American Revolution, serving as nurses, cooks, running family farms, and even posing as soldiers on a number of occasions. And now they wanted greater rights. Abigail Adams, the wife of John Adams, argued that independence should apply to both men and women. In a letter to her husband in 1776, she wrote, Remember the ladies, and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Remember, all men would be tyrants if they could. If particular attention is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to ferment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound to any laws in which we have no voice or representation. So unfortunately, in the new government John Adams helped create, women did not enjoy full citizenship. Only New Jersey granted unmarried and widowed female property owners the right to vote, and that right was revoked by 1807. Still, women did make gains after the American Revolution. In the aftermath of the American Revolution, the idea of Republican motherhood emerged. Now, Republican motherhood was the belief that women had the, had the responsibility of protecting morality and nurturing civic virtue in their husbands and children. The concept of Republican motherhood made women moral leaders within American society and opened the door to greater access to education for women so that they might instruct their children. Education for women did increase in America following the revolution. For example, in the 1790s, Massachusetts declared that women had an equal right to schooling. Literacy rates would continue to climb for women in the early 1800s, leading to new calls for equality and eventually a feminist movement by 1848. Perhaps one of the greatest failures of the American Revolution was its inability to live up to its own ideals when it came to the issue of slavery. During the Revolutionary War, over 5,000 African Americans took up arms to fight for the cause of independence. They did so believing in the idea that all men are created equal and the hope that a new government would offer them greater freedom. Indeed, there was a movement to end the institution of slavery at the outset of the American Revolutionary War. For example, a group of Philadelphia Quakers founded the world's first anti-slavery society in 1775, known as the Society for the Relief of Free Negroes Unlawfully Held in Bondage. Additionally, many states began to pass manumission laws, uh, which allowed slave owners to free their slaves. Virginia, uh, Virginia's legislature passed the Manumission Act in 1782, and the New York Manumission Society was established in 1785, whose members included John Jay and Alexander Hamilton. The most significant steps to ending slavery were taken in the North, with slavery being abolished in all of the New England region following the American Revolution, Revolutionary War, and states like New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey allowing for the gradual emancipation of slaves, a process which took some states like New York until 1830 to actually complete. There was progress made in ending slavery at the national level as well. Under the Articles of Confederation, for example, there were attempts to limit the spread of slavery. One of the most significant accomplishments of the Articles of Confederation was the passage of the Northwest Ordinance, which organized Western lands for future settlement and statehood. As part of that act, the institution of slavery was banned in the Northwest Territory, which kept it from spreading to places like Ohio and Illinois. 
However, slavery remained legal in every Southern state. And throughout America, free blacks and slaves faced intense discrimination. African Americans were often denied the right to own property, access to education, and in many places, laws were passed that forbid interracial marriages. The barbaric slave trade and the Middle Passage would not be banned by the United States until 1807, and the U.S. Constitution would in part recognize the institution of slavery with the horrific Three-Fifths Compromise, which will be discussed in a later lecture. Over the coming decades, the institution of slavery would continue to grow throughout parts of the South and West until it would eventually tear the United States apart by 1860. So next I wanna talk about the economic effects of the American Revolution. Economically, the American Revolution freed the colonists from the restraints of mercantilism and gave Americans the power to make their own economic decisions. Initially, American trade was hurt by the American Revolution since they no longer could trade freely with the, within the British Empire. However, over time, American merchants found new markets for their goods, trading as far away as the Baltic and China seas. Patriot merchants replaced loyalist merchants in cities across the United States, and this new group of traders promoted new business ventures, including the beginnings of manufacturing in the United States. Thus, out of the American Revolution came a new spirit of capitalism, which would really start to blossom during the later market revolution, which we'll explore further in period four. Despite some of these economic opportunities, 95% of Americans continued to farm at the end of the American Revolution. And many of these Americans found themselves in a worse financial situation after the war was over, as opposed to before. During the war, states had borrowed more and more money, more money than they could possibly pay back. As a result, there was runaway inflation throughout the United States, and the money issued by the Continental Congress had become worthless. By 1784, the new nation was facing severe economic depression, which would lead to civil unrest. This unrest is probably best exemplified by Shays' Rebellion in 1787. The Articles of Confederation's inability to deal with the economic problems of the new country was a major reason why they were eventually replaced by the U.S. Constitution. So the last effect I want to talk about regards foreign affairs. No longer a colony of Great Britain, the American Revolution also allowed the United States to develop its own foreign policy. The American colonies would not have won their independence if not for an alliance with France. The Treaty of Alliance, signed in 1778, committed the French to the cause of American independence, and the colonists were grateful for French aid. After the creation of the U.S. Constitution, Americans would begin to negotiate new trading rights and boundary lines with other European countries as well, such as Spain and Great Britain. But perhaps the most significant impact of the American Revolution on foreign affairs was unintended. Aiding the American colonies had put the French government into significant debt and forced it to raise taxes on its people. The strain of these taxes, combined with the ideas of the Enlightenment, set into motion what would eventually become known as the French Revolution in 1789. Thus, the French Revolution resulted from the American Revolution and its ideas of democracy. The French Declaration of the Rights of Man echoed many of the ideas of Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, and the ongoing turmoil caused by the French Revolution would help shape American foreign and domestic policy in the 1790s. So was the American Revolution truly revolutionary? Did enough change for us to consider this a tectonic shift in American society, or was the American Revolution more of a war for independence? Clearly, there were changes in government and who had power. Democratic ideals spread throughout the states following the revolution and would have a great influence on the ways Americans thought about politics, economics, and society. However, it is important to note that a lot of things stayed the same, including a lack of rights for women, Native Americans, and African Americans throughout all of American society. Ultimately, I'll let you decide whether or not these effects that I've discussed here are enough to call the American Revolution truly revolutionary.